Greetings all. Uh, I thought I'd start doing something a little new. I, I figure I'm going to start doing some short feeler segments before I do uh, upcoming black and white videos or pieces. Uh, and I kind of want to show a brief foray of what the next topic is going to be. And then usually I pick one little thing, one little detail that I might just glance over in the main segment. And I'll tr try to delve deeper into it, maybe put a little bit more production value, a little bit more effort into it. And uh, this will be a good, a good purpose of that. So this next segment that I'm going to do is going to be on one of those big social faux pas. And that's politics. And I'm going to tackle this the same way as always. I'm going to try to approach it as unbiased as possible. And especially with politics, I'm going to try to show that there really isn't a correct side in this. And the big loser in everything is you and me, pretty much all of American society. I mean, there's no real winners here, uh, contrary to what people think or preach. And it kind of comes down to human nature, really. People seek out conflict, and perhaps it stems from par primordial fight-or-flight type responses for survival, but in modern culture, um, this fight-or-flight thing kind of goes into more trivial things. In this case, topics like politics. So people pick a side and they fight it tooth and nail trying to impose their beliefs onto you and it kind of does like a superiority kind of show a dominance type effect. And politics doesn't really need to work this way, but people need it to work this way. And then what do we wind up with? We wind up with everyone divided and at each other's throats and it's real, it's real barbarian almost. And in politics, especially with this uh, upcoming segment, the little things I think are funny that I find humor in uh, are like political campaigns, the way they put videos out there. And nobody sees it, and it makes me crazy. But people get up there, and they just try to rile people up and get people fired up. They use uh, certain keywords, buzzwords. They say, I believe in freedom. I believe in democracy. I believe in our youth. Well, everybody believes in that. But people hear that, and if that's their particular political affiliation, they get fired up about it, and they say, you know, that's somebody I can get behind. And and it winds up getting votes. In case in point, I'm going to kind of show two of the top polling candidates from both camps and their campaign videos, uh, their current campaign videos. And I discredit Donald Trump in all of this, even though he is ahead in polling for his particular party, because, I mean, it's kind of a joke. Uh, and trying to trying to shed more light in him or anything, it's, it's kind of a waste of time. You know, people know it's a joke. Uh, he doesn't seem to know it's a joke, but whatever. So, I mean, he gets people riled up, gets people really, you know, behind him with some of these, with all his yelling and everything, and it goes right back to that whole, people hear that yelling, people hear loud voices, and, and they, they see that pointing, and they say, this person must know what they're talking about. Hmm. So, um, without further ado, let's look at some of these messages. So, let's begin. It's a time for truth. A time to rise to the challenge, just as Americans have always done. And give bold voice and action to reclaiming the unlimited potential of each and every one of us. Your fight is my yeah, fight. I believe in America and her people. I believe in the conservative people principles upon Americans, which this country was built. Rushmore. And I believe we can stand up and restore our promise, honor the Constitution, Constitution good. and reestablish our leadership in the world. It's going to take a new generation of courageous conservatives to help make America great again. And I'm Farmers, ready to stand with you to lead the fight. This guy's a real I'm Ted terrible. Cruz. If you want more of the same, there'll be plenty to choose from. Well, and then to be fair, let's uh, let's kind of see what the uh, the DNC has to offer with uh, their top candidate. I ran for president to renew the promise American. of America, to rebuild the middle class and sustain Angie. the American dream, to provide opportunity to those who are willing to work hard yeah, for it and have that work rewarded so they can save for college a home and retirement 
afford gas and groceries and have a little left over. Yeah, that's what I want. We need you leaders see, once again who can tap into that special blend of American confidence and optimism Ooh, that has enabled flags. generations before us to meet our Our toughest challenges. Leaders who can help us show ourselves and the world that with our ingenuity, creativity, and innovative spirit, there are no limits. That's hands down that top last one. I think that one was way more. And, well, I mean, there's a lot more of the Republican candidates out there, very few Democratic candidates. So, for fun, let's throw the next guy down the line who's pulling pretty well in CBS to say. So the same kinds of things that work in normal everyday life would also work very well in Washington, D.C. Uh, we definitely need to do something to attack the horrible uh, deficits that we're running and the national debt. We definitely need some, to do something to stimulate the economy, uh, to deregulate. We need the right kinds of regulations. We need to agree on what kind of regulations we do need we do and get rid of all the other ones. And we need to get rid of redundant programs. Uh, we would need to allow attrition to help us as people get older and retire. We don't have to replace them. We can shift people around as necessary and let the government shrink back to the size where it's lean and mean and able to get things done. I think if we use that kind of approach, we'll be just fine. Okay, that was very enlightening. So, anyway, I think uh, I have some pretty heavy-hitting points for my next segment, my next installation of Black and White. And so when I finish editing it, I'll put it up and have it linked in here so you can peruse that one. And I think I really took a complete out-of-the-box logic approach on this next one and like always I approached it more from a scientific approach uh, using that sort of reasoning and I also use a lot of critical and creative thinking and some statistics and I think I might shed some new light on the whole American political landscape and the real problems at hand they're hiding in plain sight really and with a little luck hopefully I can sort of illuminate that and maybe you will won't look at politics the same way again so with that, have a nice day.